Hello, my friends. I'm glad to see you made it. We're gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. Here we are today uh, uh, again with our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, you know, we're, we're glad and happy to have you with us. And I pray that uh, our Father in heaven, our Father right here, our Lord and our Christ will, will give us wisdom and understanding of His will and, and, and a better understanding of who we are. So today we're going to be go, going over uh, John chapter 6, you know, Jesus feeds the 5,000 and, and He walks and then right away He goes and walks on the water and, and it's all kind of really significant because here we are, you know, uh, Today happens to be uh, Hanukkah, or the beginning of Hanukkah, if you're watching. Uh, and if you've been following along, uh, I just want to remind you, each and every Wednesday, there'll be another uh, Bible study video out there. And today we're going over John chapter 6. And it's good because it's good for to kick off Hanukkah, you know, and, and to remind us always that... Uh, you know, God's with us in the darkest of times. And, and that's the thing with Hanukkah and the, and the lighting of the candles and, you know, the weird food and, and the diet and, and all those things. You know, it's to remind us that, that, that God was there when we had nothing. It's to remind us, you know, even back in the Passover, you know, it was unleavened bread and bitter herbs and, and spices and to remind us that, that that life without God is bitter. And life without salvation is bitter. Life without knowledge of God is bitter. And it's to remind us, keep us humble in our heart so that, so that we, we have compassion always on everyone even those walking in darkness. That's the thing with our lives, uh, you know, the, the, the darkness always is before the light. It's when, when the light comes on, when the eyes are in bed. And when does the light turn on? Well, when it's darkness. Oh, and how great is the darkness within us? That's, that's usually the question, because if the power of God is greater than our darkness, then that's what's going to come out. You know, that's what's going to come from our body, it is whatever's greater in us, whatever masters over our mind and our tongue. So if God's in control, uh, the things of God are, are going to come out of us. So, Let's remember today, chapter 6 uh, of the Gospel of, of John. And today, with us, joining us in our Bible study is Diane. And Diane, do you want to... Let's, let's start with the prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you for, for this book, this word. Many, 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 many hours of blood, sweat, tears, anguish, hard times. It has taken many thousands of years to, to bring this word to us today. Father, we thank you. We, we, we thank you. Glory be to your name and your faithfulness, your love. Gracious God, give us the wisdom and the understanding to know you, to understand this word and what it's talking about. Thank you, Father. What more can we ask you to, to say or, or give to you than thanks? Father, bless us. Bless my body and my, my mouth. This video and anyone who watches it, bless them today and each and every day, forevermore. No 
holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. You want to start to read and start chapter 6, verse 1? Yes. And it says, Some time later, Yeshua went over to the far side of the Lake Kinneret, that is, Lake Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, because they had seen the miracles that he had performed on the sick. Yeshua went up to the hills and sat down there, with his talim disciples, it's with his tel tel telemedian, his disciples. <laughs> <laughs> Here she's reading from the Jewish Bible, which goes back to the original names, but but today we know his disciples, and his followers. <laughs> now the Judean festival of the Pesach was coming up. So when Yeshua looked up and saw that a large crowd was approaching, he said to Philip, Where will we be able to buy bread so that these people can eat? Yes, Yeshua said this to test Philip, for Yeshua himself knew what he was about to do. Philip answered, Half a year's wages wouldn't buy enough bread for them. Each one would get only a bite. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Shem and Kepha, said to him, There's a young fellow here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Yeshua said, Have the people sit down. There was a lot of grass there, so they sat down, and the number of men was about five thousand. When Yeshua took the loaves of the bread, and after making a baraka, gave to all who were sitting there, and likewise with the fish, as much as they wanted. After they had eaten their fill, he told them, his disciples, gather the leftover pieces, so that nothing gets wasted. They gathered them and filled twelve baskets with pieces, from the five barley loaves that were left by those who had eaten. Okay, stop right there. I want to just read something here. Uh, 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 on these tassels and these tea seats, you know, uh, we got to chew up the Word of God. That's the thing. Jesus Christ it is the bread of life. And, and so we got to chew it up a, a little bit and, and eat this bread a little bit. And, and so, here we have, I, I have uh, many different tassels and make many different tassels. And, and, but here's one with, with uh, you know, the name of, of, of God on it. And, and it's yod Hey bav Hey, right? And, and it's all like DNA, it's kind of woven together. And there's eight fingers here. And, and it's notice, and I know I'm talking symbolism. You can take that story word for word, and it is word for word. This happened. But, but, they, 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 let me explain to you what happened. <laughs> what happened? What was Jesus explaining? What was he doing? <clears throat> so you got to remember the Bible and, and all the people who live in the Bible. God is explaining, showing us what happens in the spiritual realm that, that uh, we can't see. That, that we can't see that it happens. So, so he displayed everything God does in, in the realm that we can't see here in, in the physical realm. And it's not only was Jesus the, the word of God in the flesh, but, but, but all the, the stuff that goes on. It's all there, uh, you know, it's all there showing what, what the spiritual battle is about. Here I got a TZ, and this one has the, the 613 statutes and precepts of God. And again, it's got the eight fingers here at the bottom. So we got the two blue ones, 
right? And, and then we got the five, we got the five loaves. See, so what are we going to feed them? No, and, and he tests Philip. What will we feed them? And, and what are we going to do? And oh, Philip, it's going to take, you know, a whole half a year's wage. 200 denarii, uh, this great amount of money. And even at that, everybody's just going to get a little piece, a little something. And he says, well, what are we going to feed him? Ain't it funny, Andrew, you know, each disciple, each person has their own gift. Andrew, what is Andrew's gift? It's, it's a little gift, but it's a good one. And what did Andrew did? He, he was one of, uh, of the disciples uh, of John, the, the, the Baptist. Andrew goes in and he brings his brother. Hey, meet Jesus. Meet this guy. I found the Messiah. Come meet him. Andrew brings this little boy. Philip, oh, it's going to take a hundred years, you know. Oh, years worth the wages. It's hopeless. It's a crazy talk. Andrew brings, brings this little boy. Lord, we have. We have. What do we have? What do we got? Philip sees what they don't have. Andrew sees what they got. What do I got? I got a little boy who, 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 who wants to see Jesus. Wants to know Jesus. A little gift. He's got five loaves. Five loaves to the five books of Moses. See, in the five books of Moses, you find out what was holiness. Jesus Christ is the holiness of God. What are we going to feed them? The, the five loaves. And what else do we got? We got two fish. The five loaves and the two fish. Because when we eat the, the five loaves, the, the, the statutes and precepts of God, the five books of Moses, the Torah, we find out that the Holy Spirit and God, Jesus, Two blue strings are, are the two fish. Jesus and God are one. What are we going to feed them? The five fish or the five loaves and the two fish. God and, and Jesus. And, and notice, they're in the story. Who's going to feed them? There's one right there. Who's going to feed them? You. You, the, the, the disciples. He has the disciples. He blesses the bread, and then has the disciples pass it up. See, and we still don't understand. And everybody, and they make sure to make notice that there was 5,000 people, and everybody ate and had their fill. As much as they wanted, they didn't have a little piece, they had as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted. And, and then he tells them, gather up the fragments <laughs> so that there's nothing's lost. So, so God kind of works like this, and I know I'm getting off track, but it kind of works like this. There's absolutely no way in heaven, earth, under the earth, or any way, any chance for you to get into heaven or be into the presence of the living God. You're going to hell, and it's in the story. Judgment was passed, guilty, and you deserve hell. And it's not that we deserve hell, it's that's that's the holiness of God. If we want to go into the presence of God, we will be consumed by the fire and the holiness that He is. So God did something. And He broke this up. He breaks Jesus in the bread. And why is Jesus this so significant? And Hanukkah, Hanukkah, you know, the lighting of the candles is to read, what, what, you know, on the Maccabeans day or Maccabees day, 
And who knows if they were truly God people, but, but it was a rededication of the temple. God kept telling them for years and years and years, over and over and over, I will not live or dwell within the temple made by man's hands. Won't do it. But only the temple made by God's hands. So every time they re rebuilt this temple, and, and that things go awry, things go bad. You know, they, they weren't listening to, to, to God. Same with these precepts and these things, trying to make them a physical place. It, yeah, God performed these things physically, but, but they were there to show us what happened spiritually. How to kill and, and conquer our, our sins, our, these demons, these spirits in dark places and stuff around the world. So God does something. He, he gives a, a gift. It's in our DNA. That's why this is like DNA. So he breaks Jesus, the bread, and, and there's the Spirit of God, the living Christ, living in each person. <laughs> Everybody across the world. That's what God did. Jesus is like that. The alabaster box. The Spirit of the living God is living in Jesus, and, and it cracks that open and pours that out on, on to humanity. And everybody ate until they had their full. In their fail. Right? And, and then Jesus says, Now gather up all the fragments left over. So not one is last. So you see, God, Jesus says, I come from heaven. Everything that comes from heaven we will return to heaven. Everything that comes from God will go back to God. So, so, those fragments, God, the Spirit of God, Jesus, is spread out through all the world. And when Jesus says, collect the fragments, they come back. They return to God. Not Nothing is lost. Nothing. Twelve baskets left over. Even all enough for all twelve tribes. That's the thing we gotta recognize. Not all the people who say they are Jews are Jews. But all twelve tribes of, of the people of Israel are the twelve tribes of the people of Israel. Now, some of those people may be to the tribe of Ephraim, some to the tribe of Manasseh. The tribe of Ephraim represents the Christians. They, they are the head, uh, the helmet of God's salvation. <laughs> they didn't have no salvation, no, no knowledge of salvation, didn't know what salvation was till Jesus Christ comes. Those who believe in Jesus have that helmet of salvation. They are the, represent the tribe of Ephraim. Now Manasseh, right, these are the two sons of Joseph. Joseph uh, is royal line, Joseph would represent Jesus. Right? So you got, now nah, it's all symbolism. We're pre preaching Torah today in, in, in symbolism. And how this is seen in that symbolism because they make mention that this all happens right there at the feast of, of uh, peace offering, the feast of Passover. Right? Jesus is the feast. He's the Passover lamb. He comes to bless the, 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 that feast day. Right? He's, he's going to bless it. He's going to rededicate the, the temple back to God. And the temple is the men and women of, of the earth. And they didn't recognize it. They, they were outside of God. They, they didn't have the knowledge of the salvation. Now Manasseh represents uh, those who, uh, who want to live by the law, Orthodox Judaism. Now you say, what about the, the Muslims? Well, that's another tribe, and it's a different one, and that's the thing, you go down and we'll find out, you know, that's another story. Anyway, they don't belong, they're not a part of the 12 tribes. That's the thing, not everybody who claims to be Jews are Jews. 
but, but those who know Jesus Christ, those who have been unveiled, have been opened, and that all comes through, through our love for, for the Word of God, because Jesus Christ is the Word of God. He is all these things. He says, not one jot, not one tittle from the law, from the Torah, will be taken away. And, and it will be lived out every day to the very end of time, till everything has been accomplished. And, and nothing's to be taken away. He didn't come to take away any of it. He came to bless it. He come to say, hey, this stuff is truth. This stuff is real. It really came from God. A messenger from God gave these as gifts to human beings so that we may learn and use these stuff as tools to walk through life, to, to get through life. You know, and that's the thing. We gotta recognize it and be aware of, of the blasphemy of, of the Holy Spirit of God in His holiness. If we get off track, that can affect us to third and fourth, fourth generation of children. Lots of pain, lots of suffering. Here we see today in our world, where's all the pain and the suffering from? We got, uh, we listen to, to the false prophets. We listen to, to, to the vanity, greed, uh, anything we wanted to, to, to make God into be. And we got off the path. What happens when we get off the path? Is God mad and going to destroy the world? No. That's the whole thing with the Hanukkah and the lights. No. No. God, Jesus is Savior. Savior of the world. When the world is ready to destroy itself, when everything's ready to, to be gone, to be just... just out of hope, out of loss, just totally hopeless. Then that's when God comes. That's when Jesus comes. Restore our hope. Restore our minds. And that's what he came in and he was doing here. And did they understand what was happening? Couldn't understand it. Now, it's very interesting because here's where Jesus walks on the water. They couldn't understand what happened. Everybody wanted to, to make him the king. Look, here's chapter 6, verse 6, 13. So they gathered them up and filled the twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves and left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to a mountain by himself. They, they wanted to make him king. You know, everybody came to gather around because they saw the miracles he was doing, healing the sick and the lame and, and, and all. We, we got to go there. Gotta go check it out. But but they didn't want want to hear what he had to say. You know, they, they wanted the gifts, that they wanted the, the reward. The food came, and now they want to make him king. You know many people today received uh churches have a lot of food banks and, and everybody comes for the food. Come for the relief, come for the reward, but but they don't come for Jesus. They don't want to know who Jesus is. And, and that's the thing, you know, Jesus gets upset. You know, they, they, they come and we work, even today, we work for, for the food. We, we work for the reward. We work to please God. We work to, to please one another. Each other's opinions is, is more important to us than, than God's opinion. And, and we work for that opinion. We work for it. You know, I hate to keep going back to this, but it's so critical. It is so critical. And, and I thank God. 
But thank God that, that we don't have to worry about these things. <laughs> I don't have to worry about my insurance payments because I don't make it. I thank God I don't worry about that stuff. Yeah, the devil tries to, to come in and put that fear and that, that doubt and, and the stress to say, hey, you got to think about that. You, you got to worry about that. And I see a lot of people worry about that. I see a lot of people stressed out about that. And I thank God that, that I'm not stressed out about that. And that's my thing. That's why I cry out about the insurance stuff and, and the slavery that it puts. It, I, I feel for you guys who are under all that stress and, and worry. And you don't have to be. You truly don't have to be under all that stress and worry. You work so hard to, to get rid of that stress so you don't have to think of that stress. And, and, and you know, when you add up all your health care, eye, teeth, you know, house insurance, and these eight insurance payments later, you know, 50% of all your income, you don't even see. So you don't have to stress out. But 80% of your time is worried about how do I get the job that's gonna pay for the stuff that's gonna make me not stress out. And it's a vicious, vicious cycle of stress, worry, slavery. You know, that's the thing I, I it's so devastating is Jesus. God, Jesus died for the sins of the world because that's how, how disgusting the sins of the world are to God. Had to, had to do something about it. it, it it's an abomination that, that, that God would create and make man in his image, yet it, it, man in his image it is vile full of wickedness, sin, untrust, unfaith. So, so Jesus came to, to, to do something about it. It was so vile, so disgusting to God. Look at, at, at the way he was destroyed. That, that's how disgusting it was to him. That I had to do something and, and I, and I got to pour out my, my, a just payment. It's got to be just. And we see how he was beaten and, and violated and broken, hung on a cross. All those things. That's, that's how much God hates sin. And, and Jesus didn't just come to, to, to cover over it, to die for it, but, but to, to, to show us the holiness of God, who God is. And, and that's what Paul in his writings say is, yeah, okay, we don't have to do any of this stuff. God forgives us. But look how disgusted God is by it. Should we continue to do it? If that's how disgusted he is by it, should we keep doing it? I know there's no more sin, but but these things we know God's like eh, disgusted by. So should we still do these things? Did, should we keep doing it? Is that what we should do? So so when God says, my children, I want you to love each other as I have loved you. Should we continue to, to see each other and violate human rights? Should, should we continue to, to, to have no compassion or, or pity on our brothers and sisters? I, I mean, in our heart, in our mind. Should we continue living and working for 
the stress and the worry and these things that aren't going to take away the stress, the worry? Or should we put our trust in, in God? Who will take away the worry and the stress? Who, who will do these things? See, it's amazing. Jesus sends the guys out. He tells them, right, cross over to the other side. I'll send these people away. I'm going to go up to the mountaintop there and do some praying and, and stuff. And You guys go on to the other side. Just about dark. Here it is. Just about dark. You know, look at look at the struggles the disciples have. Followers of Christ. You know, that's the thing. Uh, it's through our struggles. They didn't brag about any of their their good stuff they did, but but the, their failures, the, their weaknesses. Cross over to that other side. Right before dark, they can get three miles out. You ever been three miles out in a boat and? A, this giant storm comes up and <clears throat> was about to, to, to destroy them. And they began to cry out for help. They, they were terrified. And they're out in the middle of the storm, you know, and, and Jesus, you know, it's amazing. He sits there on top of the mountain and watches them. And he watches them. <clears throat> Just like, you know, he goes up to heaven, and he watches. How are you going to do? How can we do with, without God? And psh, nothing. Immediately. Three miles out, you know, right in the beginning of the journey. He's crashing and burning down to nothing. But, but there Jesus comes, the, the light in, in the darkness. Standing on, on, on the water, and, and he... And they were afraid. They, they even thought he might have been a ghost. They weren't sure. And immediately, when, when all the darkness and the winds and the waves and the storms and the terror, he saw they were terrified. He saw they were without hope. And immediately, he, he's going to do something about it. And he says, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have courage. Take courage. It is I, the Lord your God. And they welcomed him on the boat. Some of the stories say Peter got off the boat. In the book of John today, they don't want to give no glory to nobody, no Peter, no, no man, but, but, but only God. So they leave Peter's story out. But, 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 but then they welcomed him. And when he come onto the boat, immediately they, they were on dry land. Now, now, isn't that interesting? That <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You go back to the story of Noah. There he is in the midst of the water. Lord God, our creator. What is Jesus doing as he's walking through the book of John? In these miracles. Oh, if you were God, you'd be standing in the midst of the water, breathing life into all creation. If you were God. See, Jesus is fulfilling these things. Oh, I'm God. I'm the one who does these things. I'm the one who breathes life into men says to a 12-year-old little girl, they even, a 12-year-old little girl, is dead. And all that, the moms and the dads and the aunts and the uncles, they, they mocked Jesus. Who is this guy coming in here, you know? Yeah, it's one thing to be holy and pray and all you religious people, you know, but my God, come in here and Act like this little girl's asleep. Who, who do you think we are? We, she's been dead for a couple hours. You know, we gave her the old mirror test. We put the mirror there. She didn't fog it up for two hours. That's how they did it in old days. Jesus says, don't worry, she's just sleeping. 
and does Jesus go making some giant, great big giant prayer? And oh, glory be to God, and waving his arms and doing all this pagan stuff. No, little girl. Wake up. And she wakes up. See, Jesus comes in. If you were God, and that's what Jesus comes, I come to, to show you. I'm the one who does these things. Gives life to the dead. I'm the one who has control over the winds and the waves. I'm the one. When, when, when I climb onto the boat, the boat goes to the dry land. Noah, you know, you know, right? Sends out the dove, dove comes back, lands on the boat. They knew they had dry land. There was safety, there was a place. God says in the midst of the, of the water, let there be earth. <laughs> it was earth, and instantly, when they let him on the boat, and then they understood the, the miracle of the bread. What are we going to feed them? We don't have no money. We don't have nothing. You're going to give them what you got. What do we got? The faith of a little boy who will bring whatever he had. Five loaves and two fish. I got something. I got the knowledge and the wisdom of God in the faith of the Holy Spirit living in me. What more do we need? Nothing. Now feed them, my sons. Feed them. What? Faith in Jesus Christ. That's the faith of a little boy who would offer God five, five loaves and, and two fish. Have the faith of, of, of Andrew. He didn't go look and see what he didn't have. He found what they had. There's the faith of a little boy who wanted to see Jesus. Right? The little boy, he didn't come to get something from Jesus. He brought something. Let me give you a gift, God. Everybody else came to, to get, came to take, came to receive. This little boy came to give, came to serve. Jesus says that those who are great are in heaven Great in the eyes of God are servants. Servants. They're, they're like their master. They're like God. They're like their father. That they trust in, in the living God when they have nothing left to trust in but God. Because they know God is all, God is everything. God takes care of us always. So, let's go now. I want to check, show you a spot, the king. All right. Second kings. Second kings. Verse 38, and I know what you say, what's this got to do with anything? And Jesus, <laughs> he's explaining to you. And as the people said, surely this was the prophet who was to come. This is the sign. You know, Jesus says, I'm the one who does these things. Verse 38, chapter 4, and Elijah came to Gilgal when there was a famine in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. 
He said to his servant, Set on a large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found wild vines to gather, gather them from his lap full of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, not knowing that what they were and poured out some of the men, some for the men to eat. But while they were eating some of the stew, they cried out, Oh, man of God, there's death in this pot. And they could not eat it. And he said, and, and he said, then bring flour. And they threw, threw it into the pot and said, pour some out for the men that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. Now a man came from Bel Shia bringing the man of God bread, uh, the bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain and sack. And Elijah said, give them to the men that they may eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. So he said it before them. And they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord, to the word of Adonai. Very interesting, is it not? Well, what did Jesus say? This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of God. Jesus says, okay, I'm the word of God. I'm God, the word of God in flesh. Oh, yeah, if you were the word of God in flesh, you, you would feed all these people with nothing, flour. And he did. And, and they had bad, you know, there was a great famine across the land at that time. Famine of what? Famine of the Word of God. What happened to America? Oh, there was a time prior to 1963 or 68, I get those two years mixed up, there was the Word of God it was in the children, it was in the schools, it was respected. It was respected. And then they took it away. What happens when you take away the word of God? A famine comes across the land. Violence breaks out. Children walk into their schools and murder one another. That's what happens within two generations. What happens in the third, in the fourth generation? What happens if we just decide The devil's way is better. It's easier. Easy. It's the road to destruction. What if we decide? I want to, to, to. I'm okay with the deeds of the devil. All those things that disgust God, they aren't disgusting to me. When the world has no pity on one another, when they has see each other as not being worthy of human rights, what are we saying to God? So let's think about that a while. I know my videos are touchy, they're, they're awfully political and, and things of that nature, but The word of God is eternal life. And faith in Jesus Christ is eternal life. And those who believe it, they, they live it. See, that's the thing, you know, like Korah's rebellion. 
gathered up all these people and everybody's bitching at Moses and Aaron. And what made you guys so holy? God said, we're all his children. We're all children of God. What gives you the right to, to, to tell us what to do? Moses goes to the Lord and explains to him what was happening. The Lord says, make these tassels for yourself. Take, take four string, these four fingers in, around your garments, all around you. Put two blue cords in it. Put one blue cord. To, to remind you, never go in whoring after your own heart or your own eyes. Be because it is the Lord our God who delivered us from the bondage, from the darkness, from the lack of knowledge, from the slavery. Some of the men and the people of the camp began to grumble. Was all upset, and they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to make the tassel. They didn't want no part of it. So Moses lined them all up, says, all right, everybody, with the tassels, make your tassels. And everybody doesn't want to make a tassel, don't make one. And we will see, God will decide for us who is holy and who is not, who is his children and who is not. And they all gathered together. And everybody who did not have this tassel was swallowed by the earth, a lot. Moses and the people didn't have to kill the people off God himself. The earth swallowed them a lot. Now Jesus says later, hey, the, the men and women of Korah, the men and women of, uh, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, they will rise in the end to, to condemn this generation be because what God did to them in, in the physical he did that so, so that we here in the physical would know what happens in the spiritual he, he did not do that to them to destroy them into an eternal fire and into eternal punishment but, but for those here in this wicked generation, the last generation, we would know and, and we would have an idea and we could physically see what happens in the spiritual realm of those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that's the one sin that's an eternal sin and there's no forgiveness for it. And that's, you know, not recognized. The, 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 the Spirit of God, the Christ, the, the Son of the living God, lives in each and every one of us. And if we want to love God, we got to love each other. Because God lives in them. And that's the only way to love God. Commandment number one, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Commandment number two, love each other as you would yourself. And those two commandments, everything lies, rests on the foundation of that. That right there, Jesus says, all those who love the one and only begotten Son of God have eternal life. Because they have the knowledge and the wisdom to understand Adam is the only one begotten of God, made by God's hands. Therefore, we love each other. We love each other. So let's end in prayer. Gracious God, we, we love you and we thank you for the time of, of Hanukkah and the remembrance of, of the lighting of, of the menorah and the renewal of our temple, the rededication of our temple. We thank you, thank you, gracious God, 
for letting your light shine. For letting your, your wisdom, your love be known always, Father. We thank you, God. For we cried out. We cried out when we needed help and your answer. When we had nothing but darkness, you were there. And we thank you. When we had no hope, you restored our hope. And we thank you. When the winds and the waves crashed over our boat and, and terrified us, you were there. And we thank you. Gracious God, when we needed you the most, you were there. And so we thank you. We thank you, God, for coming and spending this day with us today. Glory be to you, Father. Thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. In your holy name we pray. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See you next time.